Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 184 of Trials and Trebuchets. I am your dungeon master in this final episode of the arc, and joining me are my players, whose names are... Hello, my name is Ben, and I play the level 9 gnome wizard Windsor Wallaby, a champion of Sheshul, <laughs> and along with their cuddly little companion, Mr. Wiggles. Meow. <laughs> it's a triumphant one. Meow. <laughs> Hi, I'm Carla, and I play the level 9 tiefling roguelock integrity Idleberry. Fighting 9 to... F oh, wait, wait. Sorry, let's <laughs> change. Fighting 9 to 5. What a way to make a living. Barely getting by. We're all dying, no relieving. I just use my knife. Sneak attack, never getting credit. It's enough to drive you crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Incredible. <laughs> Hi, I'm Sarah, and I play Mira Marchand, the level 9 half-elf bard. Curing wounds, it's good to be awake again. Spend so many spell slots. Psychic lance, the grubs resist the lance. Just barely incapacitation. I'm not some level 20 healer, but for this I will revive. It's good to be alive. Wonderful, wonderful rendition. Hell yeah. Hi there, my name is Sam and I play the level nine human sorceress, Sarah Nep Sinderman. Something with space just really makes me want to sing apparently. Yeah. Space grubs, we destroyed all of your friends. <laughs> do, do, do. One this. Hope the door isn't locked. <laughs> <laughs> that yes, would be horrible. The final foe, the locked door. Last sure. time <laughs> on Trials and Trebuchets, the students faced down the moon's corruption, coming within mere moments of all dying to the inky grubs that had taken a magical form. However, our heroes were triumphant, defeating these disgusting beings from so far away and ridding the shrine of its inky infection. The four of you are alive. You find yourselves within the shrine to the creator, the goddess, Seisul or Meathide. Whatever name you want to call her, she is still the same. You are still huddled here on the ground, wrapped around integrity, after she nearly died. Twice. The moment passes. You can all let her go for fear of crushing her to death. You can get up, integrity specifically, uh, and I guess everyone except for Winsler, who is the only one who is standing and hugging. <laughs> Saren up the Cinderman, you had picked up that staff from the mage grub you have that in your possession. It doesn't seem to be reacting in a foul manner to your touching it. Uh, mm -hmm. And so you can bring that along with you. As the four of you head back into the main chamber of the shrine, you walk up to these doors. You give a big pull on them, trying to get them open. And bit by bit they do, and just wide enough that one by one you can exit from this place. In this main stony chamber, this hall with horns covering the walls, musical instruments bent into almost sculpturesque positions, you see two, uh, or rather one moving figure. It is that of the disciple, a stony-skinned giant wearing a white and uh, iridescently blue, orange, red uh, kind of shawl. And you see the crystalline form of Great the Giant, who you still know to be living. The signs, at least uh, faintly or magically, you can see there is a bluish fire in the center of this crystal, almost like uh, reflecting and refracting throughout it. The flame seems larger than when you had first entered into the room to fight the corruption. Uh, and it seems to be bit by bit, moment by moment, growing ever larger. This disciple was seated back on their pillowy platform, this time facing towards the door that the four of you had entered through. They seemed to have their eyes shut in a quiet meditation or prayer of a sort, and when you pull the door open, they look at the four of you, 
shocked that you are still alive. Uh, mouth opening slowly uh, in maybe admiration, but mostly shock. Do you want to say anything? Okay. We're alive. We did it. I did not expect that. And specifically, they look at you, Integrity, the one who had did not gain the goddess's blessing, and will say, I did not expect the four of you to live. Yeah, I... we seem to be exceeding that expectation pretty often. I mean, it's it's done. We we did it. Yes, thank you. Thank thank. They lower their head and seem to be like they put their hands on the pillow as if to like uh, pick themselves up, stand up from it, right? Standing up from a chair of sorts, and they will uh, stand and move towards you all, uh, pulling the door shut as well, and just rubbing a hand over it, feeling its coldness, and look down at you and say, I. Cannot thank you enough for this. Um, you can start by explaining. Yes, yes, I can. I can explain to you. Uh, this must have been meant to be by the goddess. Then you must have been. There are no accidents. Then you were sent here for this purpose. Okay, and they will move back towards the main part of the room and kind of gesture for the four of you to follow they'll sw they'll swing their hand again and a similar uh a differently woven uh rug will appear on the ground from nowhere with another spread of uh yellowish uh fish and some like very uh well cooked dough balls of a sort uh mm -hmm. as well as more pitchers of water and they will say sit sit eat you None of you look very well. Oh, what? What would you have me answer? What questions do you have? You, and I'm going to sit down and I'm sort of poking at a dough ball. You saw everything, right? About, about Shiora or, you know, Seishul's old place. You, you saw all of that, right? I saw what I was told by giants who came here during that era. I did okay. not go to Ib and witness that for myself. I only saw two cycles uh, uh, during that time, as well as the woman who came to me, or not to me, but to the shrine to, to, to plea for power. That is all I saw of that okay. era of, of Ib. Okay, two, two questions. The woman who came to plea for power, was she... Um, did she look like an empress? Did she have a, a, a jade circlet thing here was she and I'll you know describe Tarasus mm. to the best of my ability the woman was in distress I remember that impatient angry uh she she wore robes like any any of your kind would and wore a covering over her face that okay. is all I remember um, I remember the covering from the uh the, the the conjure memory okay okay that's what I thought and the the giants did they say anything about um if they saw any of this, anything about a woman named Nesca or a thing named Nesca, she she's someone from that civilization, someone who wants something from us, uh, the orb, I guess, and we've we've killed her, but she's still, she might still be around somehow, and I want to know what she wants or what she can do or why she's, please tell me you know something about her or the ascendants in general, anything, ascendant, um, any, anything. Were these servants of the goddess? They said they were. Or are they... An, uh, a corrupting force. They... S servants, I think. Servants. Why would you kill servants to the goddess? To say so? Well, they wanted to kill us. It was really a survival situation. Um, they, She killed a, a very good friend of ours and tried to kill several of us. And I don't know why. I don't know what she really wanted or why... Why any of this is happening to us? Just, just does does ascendance mean anything to you? Does does consuming orchid dust, the sight, any of that? They will walk to the wall, and the wall filled with horns. They trace their fingers along the ledges until they come to a uh, metallic horn, which they will pick up from the wall. It's bent in many fluid uh, w manners. It almost looks more like a sculpture of hmm, some sort of river, if you can imagine that. Imagine someone trying to sculpt a river using only a single length of pipe. Mm. Uh, and to the best of your ability, that is what it must look like. And they will grab this from the shelf and will say, 
during the time that this place, uh, uh, these people worshipped the, the creator, the fire giants, walked the land. This, I can blow and see if there is anything there, but I don't mean to get your hopes up. I've not heard of ascendants. I know there were non-giants who did worship our goddess and called her by different names, but I have not heard of ascendants. I will blow this for you quickly and see if it will illuminate anything else for us. And they okay. almost lift it to lift the horn to their lips and will give a soft, uh, dull note. It sounds horrible, Mira. These instruments do not sound as if they are designed to be played by any means. Um, it's just a foul note in the air. Mm. The disciple will close their eyes as they do this, and they will stand there for a second blowing through this horn before lowering it and will say, the memories given into this horn by whatever giants came here at the end of that cycle, there is tales of ascendance and an empire which took over their wood, sacrifices given to pr the priests mm -hmm. in order to allow for ascendance, Rumors of some creature from beyond the sky. I assume that to be the corruption, yes? Yes. Do you know further of this? Yes, that it's the oh. remnants of that creature. I do not... There's no memory of a person named Nesca uh, or what they wanted, what they sought for. I'm sorry. I would give you more if I could on this. No, I'm, I'm, I'm sure. Uh, thanks. If you've killed her, then... Surely the risk has passed. Maya Fides or Seisul, the creator's power wanes. So servants of hers, I don't think, I don't know. They might be Ascendance without is guidance. A form of unmortality, we think. It's some we think it's some way of sacrificing mm. someone, maybe um maybe eating the heart and getting some special power and they they can make more bodies and mm. it's is is there anything like that? Do, do giants know anything like that, even if they have a different name for it? Cycles could present one with some sort of extended life, but I, as a disciple to the goddess, live do, through her power. And if I were to die, I would go before her to, to bask in her glory, but my, my soul would go there, my body would rot. And given the power of the goddess, if she gave me the ability to, I could return to the mortal world. Yes. If this oh. person you speak of is, as you say, a, a devout of the goddess of Seisul, she might have that power too. Yes. But the goddess's power wanes. She would not give that out just simply to anyone at this moment. This is why you fought that corruption in there. It sapped... The goddess's power took from her what little she had left. When false Ib was created, the second, this imitation world, appeared in the sky, her power felt split to me. I saw no prophecies. I saw no omens of this. The woman came here and made a plea. She went back to Ib. In those moments, her power, the goddess's power, waned. So the same power divided amongst two Ibs. Is, is that what you're saying? No. No. Okay. Her power is not in the new Ib. There is no remnant of natural magic in that world. Like, it has not a figment within it. Wait, do you know what a month is? Uh, giants of old kept time. Uh, this was also thrown about when... That appeared in the sky. I don't know what you mortals do down there. Perhaps that would be something lost to time. It's just a word for time. Why? Well, that I heard a while ago when I was in a different plane, that word. And mm. that made it sound like that was also something from another time, another plane. And yeah, I just, yeah. Thank you. Mm. I, I appreciate Sorry, I don't mean to, if anyone else has, has questions, I just wanted to know. You said it was devoid of any natural magic, right? The fake, the fake Ib? Yes, uh, that is correct. It lacks a figment. I think we may have encountered something along those lines, or a frag, uh, some sort of leftover piece of what you might be referring to. 
What do you speak of? It had it had some spells that I wasn't too familiar with. It was in in another plane. Uh, Which one? Isathil. When you say that name, Winsler, there's almost a gasp that shudders through all the horns on the walls. Oh. Integrity says this. <laughs> we do not speak the names of lesser divines in these halls. I told you that her power fragmented or shrank in a moment. Yes. Hmm. When the new Ib appeared in our sky, in my sky, so too did those six others. Lesser hmm. divines from the same place that the goddess might have emerged from time immemorial past swept up some fragments of her power and created their own worlds. Not as powerful as Seisul's, the creators, but nonetheless they created them. That one you spoke the name of, young man, young gnome, sequestered much of the natural magic left over in these worlds, if in, the, in the space outside, and also took upon themselves the name of deity of creation. Hmm. And they will shake their head and say, there is not two deities who can create. There is a lesser divine who claims to, and the goddess of creation herself. Hmm. So these six lesser divines that you call them, mm -mm. they are not a part of Seisul. No. Scavengers who showed up in the aftermath of her power waning. Hmm. Their planes have figments, however. Natural magic emanates from them, but not false ib for... I think the goddess's power is too weak to create two planes in identical images, and both have such a thing at their center. Hmm. But if there was perhaps only one Ib, if some miraculous people restored it in some way... Well, you mentioned that before, mm. when we brought up the whole thing involving the potentiality that we mentioned, that we brought up, you said that there were some changes in the sky, right? Something something had happened yes. that was different? Three of those planes, and they'll point up to the sky at the ring of uh, six spherical orb of translucent light which float around your own home world. And they'll point at those and say, three of those came more in line with it itself. Hmm. Three remain where they were before, but closer in a way. Still distant, though. I don't know if that was the, the world or the goddess herself trying to reclaim the stolen power from those divines or if it was something external acting, but it did change. Hmm. The only three which did not were the plane of the thief which you spoke of earlier, that one of red lightning, and that of the brown cloud. Hmm. The other three seem more controlled. Less out of synchronicity. I wonder if there is a way that we could maybe bring those more in line with one another. I wonder if that, what that would change. You could travel there, steal the magic back from those divines. You fought back the corruption in the other room. I'm sure something like that would be a, a, a simple task for the four of you, yes? Well, uh, surely. Definitely not. Uh, mm. We haven't had um, the best of luck in one of those places. We've been there quite a few times and we haven't really ever come out of there unscathed i guess in one way or another i see they look disheartened at that um, but maybe there's a there's a there's a way in your time on the false ib do you know of any siphons of magic i do not know where the power of the goddess went in your new ib i i that is a area which is not known to me none of the giants of this world have engaged or interacted with any such things. The, their natural magics are gone. Have you seen anything like that? I um, I would like to make a history check to see yeah. if I have heard of specifically in textbooks or mm. in any of the stuff that I've read, mm -hmm. places where there have been significant surges of magic of some kind. Yeah. Or just where there's high concentrations of magical energy that has remained make a, unexplained. Make an arcana. Arcana. Make arcana. an arcana or history check, Winsler Wallaby. Okay. Have a look. Not bad. I will make a mm. history check because okay. I feel like this would be more inclined to be like, 
location based. Yes. So that would be a do, 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 27. Ooh. Easily, Winsler. Hmm. The moment they say it. There's a few areas of high magic, the poles, north and south. Mm-hmm. Other, that, those are stormy and filled with magic. The other, obvious, immediate to your mind. Wildcliff School of the Arcane is a hub of arcane flow. Yes. Despite years, hundreds of years of students casting spells, learning spells, making spells, harnessing the arcane energy of the place and crafting items with it, it remains a hub of arcane energy hmm. and divine energy, but not so much natural energy. Psst, psst. I'm going to call on to my friends. <laughs> yeah, you psst your friends. I'm going to wait for them to look at me. Mm-hmm. Um. And I would like you to read my mouth and um, uh, uh. <laughs> and like try to subtly sub subtly um mouth the word orbs to my friends. Mm. Mm. Um, just like I don't know, somehow like in integrity's head, thinking that I don't know, like these are powerful things. In our in our mm-hmm. ib, so yeah, I'm just gonna mm. mouth that to my friends. You mouth, integrity mouths the words orbs. It's distinct. She makes an O with her mouth, like an or even orb. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Winsler, Wildcliff, integrity mouths orbs at the rest of you. What do you want to say? Wildcliff orbs siphon what? source of magic siphon mm. hatch. Hmm. I wonder if they know anything about the hatch. Ooh. Or if or if the word hatch rings any significance to them. Mm. Do you want to ask about it? Just a just a quick question. Um I don't Yes, anything. I don't know if my young gnome. this is significant to you at all, but I guess we I'm trying to piece together this weird puzzle. Does anything resembling a hatch ring a bell to you at all? The woman I told you of screamed of such things. I did not listen to her, but she pleaded with the goddess herself. Beyond this, again, I told you giants from the horn, and they gesture to the one that they just put back on the shelf. Those fire giants gave up lives and sacrifice to mea fide in numerous times. The the last one came here to end the cycle, to renew the cycle, and was the last cycle of old Ib. When they were reborn, they were sent to new Ib. Up there in the sky, false, the false plane. But I did not hear of a hatch from them. The only woman or person I've heard scream and squawk about it is the woman who came here. What did she say? Power about it. Then she was screaming about it being used to kill people, to store things within it. I assumed it to be some small magical vessel of a sort. I don't engage with non-giant. Histories quite often. Like I said, the four of you are the most who have been here who are not of giant kind. Hmm. So it's seeming to me that this person that came to you and asking for power was asking Seisul for the power to create a hatch? I think it was power to stop... Something to do with a hatch. It's been millennia. Progenitor. Did she say progenitor? No. I've not heard the word. Okay. Hmm. Is that corruption? The name which it takes? Yeah. It came from beyond the light of the goddess. A place far at the edge of our reality called the Deep Plain. What else do you know about it? Nothing escapes from that place. That is what I know of it. It is the... I shouldn't say nothing escapes. Things, creatures, the foul beings at the periphery, they live there and cannot access our worlds. But things like time, matter itself, some emotions, they emanate from that place. How would it be possible to summon something from that plane if they were invited in? Because as as much Mm. as I remember... I think it was the Ascendants or somebody invited it in somehow. If if it was... If you created a pathway or a bridge between those places, the same as what you would have walked on to come from Ib to this place. 
yes, a, a, a pathway through the astral sea could be bent between the far plane or the deep plane and Ib. Yes, like a, a, a sufficiently powerful person could do that. Could that be the hatch? I, I know you don't know, but is is I that if, if uh, someone built the hatch to to bring the progenitor here? Yeah. Then, if it is a pathway, then yes, a, a road, bridge, path, a portal between places unconnected. Yes, that is a reality of what can occur in the worlds. Yes. Hmm. One more question. Something foul could crawl from that. Yes. And I'm gonna One like look question. a little bit at integrity, um, hmm. like almost trying to gauge, like trying to get her okay to ask yeah. this question. Integrity mirror is looking at you weird. <laughs> and I'm going okay. to mouth what. Uh, <laughs> what? <laughs> if, in order to to create a path like that, it would probably need um, something powerful, some kind of like powerful, um, like our ar- ar- arcane or divine focus, something that could be channeled into something. Um, do arcane you... focuses would be preferred. The deep plane is. <sighs> do you not learn this on Ib? A figment is the source of natural magics. Divines are the source, goddess, the goddess above, or those lesser beings that call themselves deities. That is the source of divine magic. The far realm, the deep plane, that which exists beyond the light of the goddess, that is the source of arcane energy. Okay. That is where the magics that you use on Ib come from. Yes, if someone had a source to channel powerful arcane energy, surely they could bridge that space between the two easily okay. Okay. and allow something foul like the corruption to escape. Okay, that's that's what I thought. Thanks. Yes, Serenep. <laughs> Serenep was actually kind of like raising her raising a hand. Her Integrity hand. says, "Yeah, go ahead." <laughs> um um I think when we came in like they sat down just kind of like munching on one of the little bread rolls and mm-hmm. she's been kind of holding this this kind of like the staff is like sitting yes. up like next to her like while she's holding it she's like um the corruption was using this staff when we fought mm. it 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 just it when we destroyed it it kind of fell to the ground do you sense if it if this is free of corruption or or was this something that was here in this room before and then like do you recognize it hold it in the air for me i hold it up in the air and they will reach out their hand they all crouch slightly down and <laughs> reach out their hand to you Serenep, and their palm their palm is coated in spores and the spores will begin to glow as they push magic through it and the staff itself with its inky stone tip will be pulled from your hands and float in the air for a few moments the giant this disciple will say this seems to be a worldly artifact something created in ib and they will uh pull their hand back and it will drop gently back into your uh, hands, Serenup then will say, it seems not to be a foul creation of the corruption, rather uh, something. Were these people that you speak of, girl, s- were they friendly to the corruption? And they'll um, point at you, Mira. Um, Why as, would they, would they give it gifts like this? As far as I know, I think they were deceived. Mm-hmm. Foolish. Foolish. That's what, um, the, the woman that mm-hmm. you said that you saw, if... If this is who I think it is, which I'm like 90% sure it is, she's a spirit now in, in some way. And she's, she told me that this thing, it promised, it said it was a, a god, I think. It promised to, to, to bring progress and to, to, to help them. And then it poisoned them and killed them all. Mm-hmm. I don't know why. And then they had to stop it. Some being from beyond the light... I don't know if it has rhyme or reason, thought behind its being, only destruction. You saw that corruption beyond those doors. I do not believe them to be capable of anything greater. The fact that you speak of deception on their part is shocking to me. The thought that they could manipulate something, well, not giants, I should say, but something else might be possible, but foul creatures, foul creatures, foul. Integrity stands up. And walks towards the walls of this room. Yeah. And I would like to run my hands 
through like the walls. Okay. And again, like I noticed earlier before we fought the um, corruption, I noticed earlier that there are six types of um, main mm. materials here. Yes. And she's just a curious girl. Um, and she's going to ask, so Great here has his own horn, but I'm yes. noticing on the walls that they're made of different materials. Yes. Specifically six different materials. Yes. Do they mean anything? They're indicative of what a giant is to become at the end of its cycle. But we there's only four types of giants. This is not true. There are six, at the very least, that I am aware of. Your friend but... was a fire giant. His blood was laced with magic's primordial and of fire. He's crystalline now, you see, right? Mm -hmm. The giant seems to be a bit condescending towards you in this moment, Integrity, to be clear. <laughs> you see, right? Yes. Notice the crystal horns on the walls, yes? You've seen those. If yeah. there are only four giants, there ought not be six types of horns. The crystalline horn is an, I can't lie, an ill omen of the era to come. The crystalline horn is that of storm giants. The cycle creates them when the time will be hard. Again, an ill portent. That is what your friend that you brought here, this giant that will be reborn as and will be sent back to Ib to begin the cycle anew create a, a home for storm giants there on your false world. But there's stone, there's fire, there's there's frost, and there's cloud. And storm saying, and hill giants. A hill giant is a great omen. They are idiots, lazy, they do nothing. <laughs> there is no magic in their blood. Ne'er-do-wells. The goddess creates hill giants for easy eras, for easy times. That is why there are so few of their horns on the wall. It's never been an easy time. Times are seldom easy. Does this confuse you? N no, it, it, it makes sense. It's just that I don't think that the giants that live on Ib right now knows of storm giants and hill giants. Well, they will shortly. For your friend and... They point at great. You can see all of you can turn your heads quickly. Uh, assorted drinks of water and pieces of fish in your mouths or not. Uh, and can see the flame within great has grown larger now. Almost fully filling his crystalline form. And the disciple mm. will say, Your friend's transformation, metamorphosis, whatever you would like to call it, shall be at an end soon and I shall send him back to Ib to fulfill the purpose of renewing the cycle. And the world shall know of storm giants once more if they have forgotten. I found that many of you forget easily, such as your friend with the months or all these other things. Your lives are short and things are not passed so easily when the memories die with the people. That's the purpose of this whole shrine. So that the memory lives. No one forgets. So that we do not forget each single cycle of giants lives in these halls, their memories filling the horns around us. From the first until the last, they will be here. Until this moon cracks into pieces, I will remain here and keep them safe. Or until corruption comes and steals the rest of the power from my goddess. And then I will live on the moon alone until I die. Um. Yes. Can I, I know that you don't know this for sure, but since you seem to know stuff about the goddess better than me, um, I would hope. can I get your, I, I guess, professional opinion or speculation on something? Professional opinion? The goddess isn't on our ib, that's what you said, that she, her power, it doesn't reach the, no. the false ib, as you called it. There's um, not enough of it. If I had received a gift from her mm. that was specifically designed to protect me while she wasn't there mm. and then she was um able to influence the this plane again would that gift go away do you think are you speaking of your arm yes girl yes yes um I'm, the I, giant I, will smile a little bit and say 
I do not think your arm will disappear anytime soon. I appreciate you saying that, but it has on multiple occasions. I see. Your it did arm when we, is... It did when we went to, to hell, and it uh, did when we did a, 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 a little tour, I guess, of, um, of, of the, the planes, and we were in hers. Um, and it does when, yeah, um, or I think so. It was, it was Shiora, so I think Mm. so. And Mm. it does when I speak to the woman. You speak to this woman still? Not, yes. She lives? No, I told you she's a spirit. It's a spirit. In my, when I dream. Where? On Ib? When I dream. Or sometimes just when I, it just happens sometimes. Sometimes when something. Does this spirit live on your Ib? Or is it elsewhere? She said her spirit and the spirits of everybody else were in the hatch. That same gateway that I think might have summoned um, the, the, the corruption from the, the dark, uh, the, from, from where, you know. Hmm. That's curious, then. That is curious. And you... Your one... arm, okay. this gift that you've been given, I said it to you earlier, we are of kin. If you ever are to meet them in their full form, I would ask that you pass along my... Greetings. It's been many, many eons since I've seen one of my own. Are you saying this is a giant? No. I, I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm, I'm failing to understand. What made you think that I am a giant? Oh, no, I, I just... The stone giant says. I, I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to assume. I, I just thought you were a stone giant. No, I told you. I was fond of the stone giants, the original creations of the goddess. I take their form only to remember them by. So if I might ask, what are you then? Because if you're the same thing as this, Mm. I just really want to know what this this is. Mira, they will pull their shawl, like the one, the scarf around their head, and they will almost like pull it over their body. You see their form disappear as they pull it down. Like the person, like when you hold up a sheet and run away from it, except (laughs) truly. And as they pull it down to the very bottom, to their feet, uh, the scarf will roll up together, tie. Like when you uh, spin a towel to whip someone with almost, right? Just like (laughs) all all the cloth gathers together and will take on a more serpentine form of oh. orange and blue and white, and it's the scales grow from it. It grows a bit in size. No, no, ne- nowhere near the size of Nesca. Uh, a, a large serpent, almost tenish feet long, and then two feathered wings will sprout from either side. <gasps> uh, as you see, some sort of uh, winged snake before you. It coils on the ground, Mira, and will say. Uh, It speaks to all of you in the same voice. It does not seem to matter. And we'll say, I am a primordial being, a disciple of the goddess from before stone giants were carved from rock. I am a quattle, as is your arm. Oh. As were many servants of the the statues. The goddess throughout eons. The the statues from, they they look like you. Um, so that's yes, we were created in a, a form that mimicked the goddess, but was not perfect. Um, you look so cool. Then why would a disciple of the goddess want this gone? Um, the, your arm? Yes. The, the okay. Um, so the the woman I told you about, not the other, the other other one, yes. the Nesca. She, too many she women said you she speak was, of. I know, I know. She said there was. <laughs> she said that she was a servant of Mayafide, That she yes. that she believed in the goddess. But when she found out that I had this, she tried to t- take it. Why? She does not sound like a true disciple of the goddess. That is all I can say. Okay. Or mistrusts whichever your arm is. Okay. I do not know the political field of the world of Shiora that you speak of. I just know that I, as I exist, as all of us exist, as all quattles of this world, of the world, of the light of the creator, serve her first and foremost, above all others. I see. Um, quattle. Th- 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 thank you for ex- explaining. And I'm just kind of yes. staring at my left arm, just kind of transfixed with it. It is a shape changer, to be clear. So that is why it appears to you as an arm in this moment and might change to anything else in others. Okay. Can I return you know to my stone giant form? Yeah, it is... yeah, sorry. Yes. Yeah. And it 
the snake unfolds into a cloth and the stone giant stands tall once again. All of all of this makes sense. You say that you serve Mayafide, or no, 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 say Sul, first and foremost. Yes. Why? What are your beliefs when you serve, say, Sul? Like, do you, do you leave everything to serve, say, Sul? I have given up my existence to say, Sul, yes. And and Nesca was not an ascendant before they became an ascendant, and they let go of all physical things in order to ascend, R- right, Mira? Uh, yeah, yeah, worldly. I think was the word. And so, to believe in Mayafide or say Sul, you must leave everything worldly. <laughs> but Nesca's not that. Nesca is worldly. You describe a false disciple, a false priest of the creator, of the goddess. I do not know what more I need to say other than this woman that you speak of does not sound like one who would worship our goddess or be truly held dear to her. Perhaps they're not. Perhaps they are not, and you all have misunderstood. Yeah, maybe. Maybe we have. Well, that's that's something then that... That's some kind of explanation. You've asked many questions while you've been here. What will you do if we, if you are sent back? Will you, as I've asked, somehow those divines have stolen power. There's power that has been siphoned away. I worry about the goddess, about what remains. You've cured the corruption here, but it, 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 it could be elsewhere. There could be more. You speak of it being on your own world. It warrants investigation, and I think it is worth our time to do just that. So I think, I think when we have the opportunity to look into things where we can, we will see if we can most assuredly do that. I do not presume to see any of the rest of you in your lifetimes. I hope not. But you have survived against the corruption when even you... Young one, the goddess did not bless you, and yet still you survived. You came here and found your way through the labyrinth despite not being marked by the goddess as any uh, giant ought to be. I, I would ask that, please, if there's something that you can do for this, even if in your idle time, I don't care. there's nothing I can do from here. But if the four of you go back, could you please try to, to if not return Ib to what it was, then than to somehow restore the goddess's power to her so that she might do it. We'll do what we can. That's as much as I that's as much as I can really say at this point. Is that we'll we'll give it an honest try. Yes. The question is how do we even get back in the first place? <sighs> the angry woman went to the other room and prayed to the goddess to return her. But hmm. what about integrity? She is Cleansed the shrine of the goddess. I I am certain that she would listen to of any non-giant that the four of you she would listen to more even than that other woman who proclaimed you say worshipped her. You've you've saved her from losing any more strength, any more power in this world. Fought off corruption in the shrine. There would be no one else that she would listen to. I think, or be willing to listen to, at the very least. And the giant will stand fully as, what are all of you, what's the expressions? What, are, what is the scene that we see here? Hmm. Deep in thought. Big think. Okay. okay, okay. Yeah, Mira is holding some kind of bread or whatever is being given. I think she's yes. sitting. I think that she's not meeting the eyes of this disciple. Mm. She's just kind of staring down at the ground. It's a lot of information to process. Why is she not meeting eyes? She's not happy. Okay. Okay. Just everyone not information. Everyone bad stuff. wants shit from her. Everyone yeah. wants her to do their bidding and it's yeah. fucking exhausting. And now she's being asked okay. to do somebody's bidding again after mm-hmm. just being requested that and her friend nearly dying. Yeah. What about Serenup? I think after Serenup asked like like when they first got in there. Mm-hmm. Like, she was, like, was wiping the blood off, like, with, like, a napkin or something, yeah. whatever was on the table, and maybe, like, her handkerchief 
that she carries around with her everywhere. Mm -hmm. Um, But after asking that question, the exhaustion has finally come in. Like the last sparks of energy that left her with that lightning have finally like her tank's not empty right now. Yeah. She's kind of like just she's like leaning, Mm -hmm. holding on to the staff and kind of like leaning on it. And she's Mm -hmm. just kind of she's not her eyes aren't closed. She's just kind of staring down, but like still it's kind of like middle distance and just. Okay. It's okay. more stuff that we have to do Absolutely. to save the world. An idleberry, integrity idleberry, with your back bleeding still, this dark black yeah. blood. What are you doing? <sighs> integrity is playing with the dough balls and <laughs> not like playing with them, but sort like, of like just like fiddling with them. Yeah. And in in deep thought because she sort of has an idea of what what may like be the necessary thing to do okay but not quite sure like if she's capable is that something that she's gonna bring up with her friends later or is that a right now thing Mm, i mean she's still putting the pieces together there's a lot of information okay and she definitely does not want to say it out loud in front of like in front okay. of this um disciple uh okay of this disciple just okay. because like they might expect too much so integrity is just like thinking about okay maybe like more specifically um she puts like four dough balls together mm, little and sort of like dough balls yeah uh <laughs> contemplates okay in that case with the four of you despondent or at least like looking irritatedly at the ground in Mira's case, uh, visibly angry. (laughs) Um, The giant, the stone giant, the disciple, not the stone giant, will stand and walk past the four of you and will say, your friend is ready, and will hold up a hand. This gets me to look up and over to Great. Uh, Okay. You look over at Great. The fire is filling the crystal now, almost like water to the brim. The disciple will put a hand on it, And in an instant, the crystal melts away, and that fire disperses immediately. Left behind is a crystalline horn that hangs in the air as if levitating. It moves away from Great's skeleton that is left over, which it seems the flesh was burnt away, or at least the crystal that used to be his flesh was burnt away, leaving just gleaming bones that look almost as if they are created or made of moonstone itself uh you see the giant gest or the disciple gesture with a hand and that horn uh, that great blew into crystalline and oddly shaped floats up to its respective shelf and is deposited the topmost uh horn in this entire hall and then over the course of six seconds exactly you see flesh begin to knit itself onto great skeleton you see the bones themselves lengthen and he grows in stature remaining still the same square uh build but the flesh uh coming back first muscle there's a lot of fat his skin grows over it dark brown and then you see his head uh take form his eyes uh, grow back in uh his hair not braided any longer just curled and long uh grows back in and a a a wild beard of sorts and then over his dark skin you see uh light begin to shine from runes of bright blue as tattoos etch themselves into both of his arms uh reading in giant uh integrity idleberry you can read this with your eyes of the rune keeper they are omens of the storm it seems to be some poem of a great storm coming and breaking the world apart Aww. and uh you might notice integrity or the rest of you might notice that integrity and the disciple seem to read those tattoos in the same moment and have a very similar like bad reaction to reading what is written there um, and after those six seconds, great, even clothes, his, his same furs and uh, cloth and leathers appear over him, uh, at, even in his grander stature, now 22, 23 feet tall, quite a bit larger, uh, and he drops to his knees after he is fully formed, after his metamorphosis. And you just hear him <sighs> <sighs> breathing so deeply, taking gasps of air, almost like he's been holding his breath for 10 minutes, it sounds like. Jeez. 
the disciple will turn to you, Mira, and say, satisfied that he's alive? And kind of smirk a little bit. Um, they they think they're friends with you now, is the intention no. of that, Mira. Cool. Um, yeah, or at least friendly, even though you mm. blasted them with magic <laughs> of like 20 minutes ago. Yeah. The giant, or the disciple rather, walks over to Great and will say, Rise, storm giant, first of your cycle. And Great will cough and say, Give me a moment, I'm catching my breath. <sighs> and <laughs> the disciple will wait impatiently for probably 30 seconds until Great does just so, and he will stand up a bit unsteady on his feet, uh, taller than he is used to being. The s- disciple looks up at him and will say, you are to be sent to the gleaming isles on your home world, in your material plane. You will be sent there. The others of your cycle will crawl from the ocean within weeks. And Dang. with that, the disciple holds out their left palm. You see spores conjure in almost a tornado around Great. He looks at you all, specifically Mira, like one last time. And then he's gone. Vanished. Vamoose. Whoa. Sent away. Why can't you do that to us? Oh my god. It would kill you. You're not giants. <laughs> <laughs> oh. You can try if you'd like. No. I, but that no, might be pushing good. your luck for the day. I think I we're think okay. We're good. So he'll be okay then? enough. He will be fine. He will be in the gleaming aisles. I do not know if that is anywhere that you have been or will go to, but should you find him, he will remember you and remember this place and... Presumably other storm giants will begin to emerge and join him to create a haven of sorts and begin the new cycle. Well, that's pretty cool. Um, so we pray now again? Now you head to the other room, free of corruption, and pray to the goddess. And I assure you, she will heed you. And they All sit right. back down on their pillow. And we'll look at you quickly, Winsler, and we'll say, I wish you great luck. Seeing someone like you, seeing that gnomes still run about the surface of the world, gives me great pleasure. I wish you all the best. All right, Winsler nods and gets up and uh, gestures to everybody to see if they'll follow him to the door. Yeah. Uh, Yes, Sarah stands a bit stiffly and uses Mm -hmm. the... She's just kind of using the staff staff as as a a walking walking stick. stick. She's like, I'm... Integrity. I'm just going to take a couple of... Um, dough balls and fish, and <laughs> absolutely put some in my you pull like, them into cover in a napkin and yeah. put it in my. I heard if you bring a dough ball back into Iv, it creates a time paradox. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs> and so the four of you can walk over to this door, integrity legs behind slow, slightly as you see her uh, picking up as much food as she can carry. Um, the, jo- the, the disciple pays you guys no mind any longer. They close their eyes and return to like a meditative stance as you all walk up to these doors the one that had the the 150 foot uh, tall set of doors stone with constellations of serpents crowns shields and of course the moon you can all push it open as you do so and walk through now into a empty eerily quiet room there is no ashes left over from your great battle it is just cleansed And as the doors close behind you, as they are wont to do, you hear the chanting emanate from those horns as if this shrine to the goddess is returning to its natural state without you all. Hmm. You all can Hmm. walk up to this somewhat broken apart statue of Meafide or Seisul, the goddess, whatever you want to call her really, and you can pray. Do you want to pray out loud, or are you all going to pray in your heads again? Pray in our heads again. Okay. Yep. Anything specific? Hmm. Uh, Serenep thinks of just... I th- You know what? I think she thinks of all of like, like her group of friends. She thinks of the comfort that she's found at Integrity's home, mm-hmm. and she's just... She wants to have that comfort again, not to physically go there, but to like get back to our world where I can find that kind of comfort again. Okay. okay. That's my prayer. Wonderful. The rest of you, anything specific or is it just a general, please let me go home? Yeah. Yeah. I'm, 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 and please. Oh, sorry. 
Um, I was just saying that integrity is just like holding on to whoever is willing to offer their hand and she's going to mm-hmm. hold that tight yeah, because like fair. if the goddess brings them somewhere, <laughs> I want to be there with yeah. them. So I'm just <laughs> holding their hands tight and I'm like, please, please, please. I know that I prayed earlier mm-hmm. and you didn't heed that call, but please, I really want to go mm-hmm. home. Please bring me home. I'm I'm not your foe, please. And Mira, did you have something specific as well? Yeah, I think that Mira, tired as she is, uh, looks up yeah. to the sky and she thinks, I'm sorry, I can't beg and I can't plead. I, I can't do that anymore. We're making a deal. We helped you. We we did as was asked of us. We cleansed this world. We risked our lives and we'll do it again. And we'll do it again and again and again until all of this is finished. We've upheld our part. Please uphold yours. We want to go home. And just like that, Mira, you again and again and again, we just want to go home. These words ring through your head. Integrity, you're clinging to Winsler, hoping beyond anything that you don't just get left behind on the moon. Serenaf, you... Fill your brain with the comforts, the, 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 the moments of happiness from where you are from. And Winsler, just a single, I want to go home thought, goes through your own head. And you all hear a voice that responds to you, Mira, but not the rest of you. And you don't really know the other side of this conversation. Long but... get dunked. <laughs> Mira, a Gets wrecked. soothing voice. <laughs> no. Almost not whispers in your ear, but as if someone is holding you close and speaking to you, will say, all I can ask is that you'll do this again and again. And so long as you do, I will keep my part true. And you feel a very warm kind of like hand on all of your shoulders. And you will look at this statue, broken form of Meafide, blink, one or two times, and find yourselves in a dark, dank little cavern. A single beam of light shoots down from the ceiling, hundreds of feet above you, landing on a 10-foot diameter stone hatch next to you. You all feel or wait for a moment and hear the silence around you and look around and see where you are. You don't feel that natural presence, that insane uh, level of magic that flowing into your bodies that you felt on the moon but you do feel the normal amount as you are now home and in the sunken hatch yo under the sunken hatch oh, you look to your left arm immediately mm-hmm. it's back to being a black tattoo and is it in pain it is sunburny yeah oh uh, yep we're home yep. we're ho- what the fuck uh, are you okay yeah just yeah, this is familiar. Are we in the fucking hatch? I think so. Are we uh, yeah. inside the hatch? No, you look around. <laughs> We're you, not inside. You look around and see wild, the man. stairway that sl- like crawls around the edge of this room all the way up. You see the four uh, or three doorways to the trials of might, progress, and power and then the crumbled one with a couple stones pulled out of the way that leads over to reverence a room that all of you love and want to go into all the time um (laughs) just generally the stone hatch almost looking as if it is carved from this mountain itself with four four inch diameter slots on it so much for our birthday presents we and uh so much for angelica we have to i think we we should we have to send a letter to Troil. I mean, it's like, been two to... weeks. School is either already started up or it's about to. Yeah. Crow's going to know because he's here. Yeah. Mm. There is a week until the semester starts. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. So, oh, I mean, shit. okay. I have to write letters to to my aunt and Crow. But, hey, we don't have to, I guess, pack and travel to school anymore. We're already here. I guess we are. Um, I'm right. just, we, we do have a, a whole person. Do you think Kurt can? <laughs> hey, hey, maybe our sending slate's Kurt. Duh, duh, yes. I, like grab, I grabbed the slate you, from my pocket. 
pull all you and Mira, <laughs> both Serenaf and Mira both pull their sending slates out immediately. It is just spamming. Are you guys okay? <laughs> and then like, oh my god. And then like, is Angelica? What do I do with Angelica? And then, are you okay? <laughs> Where are you guys? I... Are you guys stuck? Are you guys okay? Are you in the catacombs? I'm really worried. <laughs> and then, an, and then. Uh, a final message that says, I had to give my sending slate back into Crow, but he said that you guys will be fine and turn up eventually. But I what? really hope that's true. <laughs> what? I, okay, I'm going to send a message on the slate. Yeah, So you sure. think Crow's going to gonna receive it? I'm hoping. This is Sarah Nep Sinderman reaching out to anyone in Troil. We are safe. We are at Wildcliff. Mm -hmm. Please bring our things back to the school Tell Crow that we will explain when yeah. he returns. I, I add on Thank my own you. slate. Winsler Angelica in... counts as things. <laughs> yeah, don't yeah, don't forget Angelica, please. Winsler puts an avocado in the chat. <laughs> also, also my pet, please. As, He's as very loving. For, as the three of you <laughs> spam your sending slate. <laughs> as soon as you realize you have service again. You all feel the vibrations of all of you receiving each other's messages. Integrity, as they fuck around with their sending slates, <laughs> you have your back to the hatch, and you feel that bleeding in your back. It's still going on, and you feel almost like something trying to pull you by the hair back in towards it. And you feel just this malevolent presence. There is no words spoken, but you see... In one moment, you are looking at your friends, all having fun, smiling a little bit as they send silly emojis on their sending slates. And then you see a flash, and it is just a a, a cobra-headed hu humanoid chained to a throne of a sort in an inky black room, just screaming in pain. And then you flash back, and it's still your friends, and you see Winsor go, I'm going to send an avocado. And then you flash <laughs> back, and it's the progenitor, and they are in front of you, and they are just bleeding their form undulating and snakes falling from themselves from from his own body and then you flash back and it's your friends and they're get they you see they get all get a message back that says just glad to hear it and integrity that force pulling on your brain it just it just feels as though the progenitor is a wounded animal trying to lash out somehow at you especially here at the hatch where he seems to have some sort of power. Mm -hmm. Yikes. But as you all receive that glad to hear it message on all of your slates, oh, we'll pissed. cut very quickly back to Troil, where <laughs> Crow sits in his office, the one where he had received all you, or rather like the sitting room, the study of sorts, with this plush wooden walls and the transparent ceiling that made of living glass he sits with his arms crossed and he's drinking a dark wine and he just scrolls endlessly through these mm -hmm. sending slates Shiora. taking notes in his uh, <laughs> notebook right next to it with a beautiful feathered quill he has so many this is the point where now. I have oh to go gosh. back and re-listen to the episodes and take note of our entire chat history Everything to see what Crow now knows yep uh, and he just seems to, and he gets all those messages that you guys immediately spam, and he'll look over at a person standing in, like, the corner, shadowy, a small gnome with, like, a uh, leather jacket on, and he'll say, Good news, Osgul. They are alive, in fact. Alive and well, he says, as he, the s sending slate is spammed and vibrates <laughs> relentlessly in his hand, and he'll say, Very well. Go pack up their rooms, and I will take them with take it with me to Wildcliff. Uh, I suppose I'll have a meeting with the four of them and ask them about this Shiora business, about this Shiora business, and about this ink business. Uh, you're dismissed, and he'll wave his hand, and Osgul doesn't even leave through a door. He just vanishes from sight in those shadows. Um, oh, dude, that's so fucking and cool. Crow just continues to take notes on all the wonderful things you said and little tidbits of stuff, and that is where we will end this arc. He's not the only person with notes here, Dang. Mr. Golem Dissector. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for listening. Ben, could you give us an outro, please, for this whole arc? Sure. Thank you all for listening to this episode yes. of Trials and Trebuchets. 
quite a big episode with a lot of lore, important <laughs> strings being attached. It's like on the wall where yeah, you have like the, the pins the and like the pictures and everything. Slightly more and filled it's like, in. Yeah. Still Listen to holes. the lore. Don't ask questions. If you did enjoy it, please leave a review and rating on mm-hmm. our Apple Podcast page or your podcaster of choice. It helps us out a lot. We don't do uh, advertising of yep. any kind. It's mainly through word of mouth. So just being able to share it with your friends is more than enough for us. We love to hear from you as well through reviews. Yes. We only read the five-star reviews, though, so make <laughs> sure you leave five stars. Yeah. <laughs> We also have social media pages mm-hmm. for Instagram and Twitter at Trials and Trebs. There you can check out some cool things such as fan art, upcoming mm-hmm. teasers, yes. four episodes, lots of extra goodies there to if, keep up to date with all the TNT related good stuff. If you make fan art and want us to see it, please tag us on social media so that we can because it's always a fucking treat when we get to see the wonderful art that you, the people who listen, make. Yeah, do it. We also have a link to our Discord server in the description below. Uh, you can join up and chat with a bunch of like-minded people who are also fans of the show. It's a great, great place for yeah. community of the TNT sorts. It's a great place to dissect all the episodes. Like a golem. Please don't say that. <laughs> like a golem. I will kill. I will kill you. <laughs> we also have a Patreon page for those mm-hmm. who are feeling a little extra generous. Uh, we have multiple different tiers that you can become a patron to, and you can get lots of cool goodies such as DM notes, maps, blooper reels. And you might even be able to have a chance to get a student NPC show up on the show as well. Since we're back in campus, that's going to be super likely. Super likely indeed. And last but not least, we have the all-encompassing Treb merch store. Trebmerch.com. Yes. Head on over. There's a shirt there and stickers. Yes. Grab um, some stuff. It's cool. Yeah. Thank you, Ben. Uh, thank you, everyone, for listening. Uh, we'll see you next time for the start of a brand new arc. Woo! Until then, Woo! Bye. bye! Bye! I'm so excited! Do you just say that it's August, and because it's the beginning of August, we have to say our thank yous? Well, you're correct, because I'm here to thank you. I'm Carla, and I'm Integrity Addleberry, coming to you with this message. We asked, and you delivered. So, we want to thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. There's a couple of people that we are going to give extra thanks to, because they are patrons. New patrons, at least. Thank you to the old patrons who are still patrons, and maybe like the old patrons who are no longer patrons, but were patrons before. Before the new patrons, here's a shout out to you. Thank you so much to you, Eric Olson, for your support. We truly appreciate it. Thank you to you too, Pablo Montez. We appreciate the money that you've shared with us. Thank you, Hannah. You're cool. You vibe. And thank you to Rose Lost because you're a patron. And last but not the least, you, Ellie Selenius. Thank you so much for your support. Um, it truly means a lot to us when you um, support us through Patreon and even like when you listen to the podcast. But this is specific for the patrons. So I'm saying thank you. Bye bye. I'm a little goblin and I'm saying bye. Peace out.